Hello everyone. Ahlan wa marhaban. My greetings from lovely Egypt, dedicated to everyone, everywhere, watches and listens to this session. Hope everything is going fine with all of you. As normal, safety first. Before starting this quick journey together, as if you want. Regarding COVID-19, just a gentle reminder of keeping up social distance. Please follow health organization instructions. Kindly apply all rules of personal protection. I wish you all happy times. Part 2 Fracture Reservoir Modeling Natural fractures are normally generated through diagenesis or tectonic deformation and affect most reservoirs in some way or another. This could be in a positive way as extra fluid conduits or in a negative way as barriers to flow or cross flow short circuiting natural flow paths. Type number one, typically granite or quartz reservoirs with large fractures. Here, few wells needed for development but a potential for high initial production and rapid decline of early water breakthrough. Type two, typically carbonate. Type three, typically sandstone. Type 4 In compressional setting folding in carbonates or sandstone may occur with differentiation strain leading partially to extensional fractures partially to compressional ones Single prostate reservoirs are normally considered as pure matrix porosity with permeability in the matrix. However, in type 1 reservoirs, we can consider flow and transport in the open connected fractures of the rock mass only. Matrix is assumed to be impermeable dual prosty reservoirs that flows exist in two interconnected systems first the rock matrix which usually provides the bulk of the reservoir volume second the highly permeable rock fractures the fluid flow and transport in both the connected fractures and the matrix blocks are considered A proper fracture detection at well level must be performed. This leads to a collection and description of tangible fracture attributes, location, aperture, orientations, and so on. To investigate fractures, certain observations must be made to make sense out of the fracture information to be able to model and simulate such reservoirs a proper fracture characterization are needed here i refer to part one remember you scientists uses the geomechanics approaches for fracture classifications for example the mechanical stratigraphy low 
higher elastic modules and lower fracture toughness in brittle rocks for example bit thickness low intensity decreases with thicknesses for example bit curvature low intensity increases with bit curvature it's higher strain for example fault zones low the localized intensity increases with decreasing distance to fault I got questions raises here why do we get fractures first of all fractures from fractures formed due to the loading and unloading history of rocks natural fracture represents the local stress at the time of frac fracturing extensional fracture could be mud cracks joints within a bit stylolites or biogenetic fissures shear fractures are related to sigma 1 and 3 large scale of natural fractures can be related to differentiation stress over time the maximum and minimum horizontal stress components increase with increasing purity also we can see other fractures in poor hole such as hydraulic fractures mechanical fractures thermal fractures any fault zone has fault core damage zone damage zone may include four things gauge zone small subsidiary faults fractures vines the gauge zone will normally inhibit flow and decreases the permeability why? because in a gauge zone gauge materials are the manure filling the fractures the density of secondary fault structures may be greatest near the center of the fault and decreases toward the fault tips along both strike and dip Faults and fractures can vary in character and density along the length of a fault due to variation in lithology and mineralization. Displacement also varies along a single fault from a maximum at the center to a minimum at the fault tips. Shear fractures are normally associated with faulting within the fault zone of a normal fault the dominant directions of fractures are parallel to the fault and with some minor subordinate conjugate shear fractures at about 65 degrees to the fault directions
fracture spacing versus false from Cooper 2000 that histogram of an outcrop transect starting at and perpendicular to a fold on the northeastern limb of Tibudu the famous uh, data set academic data set the histogram shows fractures in the damage zone of the fault increasing in number with proximately to the fault the faults and fractures strike perpendicular to the fault hinge the occurrence orientation and density of fault related fractures vary with the fault type and location on the fault owing the strain partitioning fractures developed in the upper part of the fault one method of the predicting fracture density relative to the structure position is the radius of curvature or rate of change approach from Ray 1968 three different axes are normally used to describe the orientations a ax in bidding plane perpendicular to fold ax p ax parallel to fold ax c ax everywhere perpendicular to bidding some models from Stern and uh, Friedman that's 1972 on left and from Cooper et al 2003 on right illustrates primary fracture set related to folding Young's modulus E is a measure of the stiffness of a given material is defined as the ratio for small strains of the rate of change of stress with strain the strain energy stored in a carbonaceous unit can be several times that of the sandstone last slide of part 2 is regarding fracture spacing two main features can be derived from the plot one fracture spacing increases with bed thickness up to a maximum value number two the maximum fracture spacing is much greater for limestone than sandstone indicating that lithology plays a large role in the spacing relationship of course I wish you find this interesting maybe keep well and stay safe bye